I started my private practice and I don't have any clients. I'm getting very few referrals. I started in January. It's already May and June and I've got no referrals. I've got very few. As I've been perusing the different communities that I'm a part of this week, and actually I see this all the time, is people genuinely concerned, and, and I get the concern, it's a valid concern, that they their practice is not growing quick enough, they don't have enough clients, they don't have any clients. Um, and I, I see this from a lot of people, but I see it a lot from people who are just starting. They'll usually say something like this, I started my practice two months ago and I've had no referrals, right? Uh, oh, what, what should I do? How do I get more? Is this for me? Should I quit? Maybe I'm not made for this. I'll go back to my other job. And people are, are, are just beside themselves and I totally get that. So that's what we're going to talk about today. I have a lot to say about this. Um, I won't bore you. Hopefully I'm going to give, I want to give you, two, there's two main things I want to talk about is the way you're supposed to think about this and a way to think about this that is based in reality that I think can really help you. And then two, let's talk about practical things. You know how much I love to be practical. Um, I'm going to give you some things you can actually do. Okay. Um, but let's start off with the more important one, uh, which is actually how we're supposed to think about this. All right. Now, let me just pull up my notes right here. I'm not going to share them on the screen, um, but I'm going to talk to you about them. And so the first thing that we kind of have to think about um, is this rule that I want you to keep in your mind. Right. And now this is going to be cliche, but hear me out. Don't compare. Okay. Now people are saying, I don't have any referrals. We're going to use the example, like over the last two or three months, I don't know. No one's, no one's calling me. The, the reason why they, well, there's a couple of reasons that that is a legitimate problem, right? Cause we need to make money. We need to grow our practice that I get it. That's, that's totally a concern, right? Uh, at the same time, what if someone had told you before you started that it's going to take six months, it's going to take a year to totally fill up right now. No one's out here to tell you that. And everyone grows at a different rate. But my guess is if someone was to say, hey, it takes a minimum of a year to fill up, all of us would feel better about not being filled up within two to three months, right? But what happens is people are usually comparing. And what you're going to see are people talking about how quickly they have filled up. You're going to have the colleague who, who, I, who somehow filled up really fast. You're going to see people talking about filling up really fast. I see people talking about it. Now, there's nothing wrong with people talking about their successes. The problem is, though, that's not the same for everyone. The way it's not the same for everyone to have a very slow start. Everyone is different, okay? Every start is different. It took me at least six months to a year to get like a full rolling caseload. I had a colleague that was up and running within month one, okay? Like full. Now, if I had compared, and at times I did, we're all guilty of it, right? I would have been, I'm, I'm gonna quit. This is, this is not for me, I don't, something's wrong. Well, I'm going to frantically make adjustments that don't really help. So number one, I want you to get you in the, in the, I want you to be in the mindset. Don't compare. Okay. Now that doesn't mean we can't learn from other people. A ask this question to yourself. What are they doing that I'm not? What is different about them that I don't have or that, you know, that is not part of my practice. So for example, um, the colleague that I'm referring to, they have a different specialty than me. Right. And so if I ask the question, what do they have that I'm lacking or I don't have or what's different about our two practices? They have a specialty that might be in more demand. Right? That is what it is. Um, now, I can do something about that. I can go ahead and develop a different specialty. I can get trained up, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but I want you to get into the habit when you catch yourself comparing, ask why. Why is that person's practice growing, right? It might be something in or out of your control. All right, so I want you to get into that habit. Now, we won't talk about comparing anymore, but uh, that's the first thing. So that's, the f that's one of the things that people struggle with the most, all right? Um, now, there's also some practical things. Um, when it comes to building a caseload, everyone's going to start their private practice at a different time. Let's say you're starting right now. It's like summertime. For most people, this is a downturn, right? This is a, uh, there's ebbs and flows in the seasons. And for a lot of therapists, the summer is going to be um, a slower season. All right. It just kind of is what it is. People go on vacation. People take time off. Um, now, again, it'll be different for every population that you work with. But generally speaking, a lot of people say that the summer is a slow time. Right. So sometimes you have to ask yourself, is it a slow season in general? And I'm just happen to be starting right now. Right. You want to think seasonally as well. Um, the other thing you want to think about is that um, and, and this kind of goes hand in hand with the comparing. But everyone's going to grow at a different speed. Everyone. 
right? Like I just shared with you my story. It took me six months to a year, right? And then I had a colleague uh, uh, one, one month. Um, there's no right or wrong. All right. So I just want you to know that it's normal for it to take a lot. It can take a long time. It can take a year. It can take, you know, it could take eight months, nine months. Um, so the reason I say that is because I don't want you frantically changing all sorts of things or going around and, um, you know, making all these adjustments to your profiles when something's not working after a month. Give it a substantial amount of time. You know, give it like several months, four, five, six months. See where you're at there. And then we can reassess and make adjustments. All right. But it's going to be different for everyone. And it's a real emotional roller coaster during this time as well. This is the other thing I want you to know. Now, let's just use its first six months or so. You've got three or four clients coming in. Every single one of those clients is going to feel so delicate. If one leaves and you have three of them and one leaves, that's what? I don't do math. That's like 33% of your whole practice, right? If two leave, this is like 67, 66% of your whole practice, right? But that won't always feel that way. Once you do get up to 20, 25, whatever your number is that you're going for, a full caseload, um, one or two clients that discharge or don't work out, it's not going to feel so acute. But it will feel acute in the beginning. So everything in the beginning is an emotional, it's like a, it's like being on a really exciting roller coaster that is really fun sometimes and really exciting and then really scary and perhaps really sad sometimes, right? Um, but just know that that's kind of a normal emotional experience and we don't need to make adjustments to our practice based off of that, all right? So that's what I wanted to talk about in terms of mindset, framing, how you think about it, all right? Let's get practical though. What, what can we do about this? Um, well, let me, again, my notes keep falling off the screen here. Uh, so here's the first thing that, that I suggest people do. Um, you can always list yourself on additional directories, okay? I want you to know that a directory is not going to solve your problem. A lot of people think they sign up for a directory and then boom, like they're going to get clients. A directory is simply a place where you list yourself that therapy seekers are going to, to search for, right? So um, you just become one therapist in a place where people are searching. They're never a magic bullet. But the more directories you're on, the more likely it is that someone who's seeking therapy is going to find you. So if you want to list on additional directories, go ahead and do that. Um, another, and then two things that people usually avoid in the beginning because, well, one, they avoid because it's costly. And two, the second thing that I'm going to tell you about, they avoid because they don't really know about it or they don't think about it much. The first one is ZocDoc. All right. This is more of a pricey um, uh, uh, directory, but it is a fairly effective one. And if you do the math, um, the cost of being on that directory will typically um, be worth it, right? If you calculate how much a session is for you versus how much you pay to get a client through that directory, um, it might be worth it to get the steam rolling, right? And you can kind of, you know, t turn it off and on if you need to. The other thing I like about ZocDoc is if, and there's nothing wrong with this, if you're feeling like it's really slow, you can turn on sponsored results on ZocDoc. You can go ahead and um, uh, basically what you do is you turn on sponsored results. You can be, you can do that. And you basically set a price you're willing to pay for a referral. That increases the likelihood that you'll be shown on the first page or whatever it is, you know, where people are searching on ZocDoc. Again, that's marketing. There's nothing wrong with it. It's very easy to do on ZocDoc and it doesn't involve Google My Business or anything like that or like Google Ads. Um, that is something that is worth checking out if you feel like it's been really slow, okay? Um, and again, you won't have to do that forever because the, the steam will be picked up. Number two is Google My Business. Totally free. It takes a little while to get some traction, um, but this Google, and I have an entire tutorial about how to set up Google My Business properly for therapists. I'll leave that down below. Um, but Google My Business is gonna be a, a place where you can list your practice and you will then show up in search results. You don't have to pay for it, they're not ads. You know, if you ever Google like, uh, I don't know, Italian restaurants near me, all the Italian restaurants pop up in the maps feature on Google, like at the top. If someone types in therapist near me and you're on Google My Business, you have a chance to show up on the top results. That would be amazing, right? That's how a lot of people search for therapists. So go ahead and set up a Google My Business profile if you haven't done that. Totally free and really effective, right? So I would encourage those things. And then the last thing I would encourage, um, but you can do it, is making tweaks to your profiles. Now, the mistake people make is that they'll wait a month and they'll think, oh, I'm not getting referrals, and they'll change all the wording on their email or on their um, profiles. But sometimes it's not the wording, right? Uh, so just make sure you try these other things first. Um, 
And if you want, have someone who knows about uh, persuasive writing and copywriting and all that kind of stuff to take a look at your um, your copy, you know, what's on your on your website. You really do want that to be able to speak to a potential uh, customer or a, a customer. Well, this is not a shop, right? But you do want it to speak to a potential therapy client. Um, so if you're not skilled in writing or you don't feel confident about that, definitely it's and I did this for my own group practice, hire someone to help you write some of the pages, uh, to write some of the copy, a really worthwhile investment. Um, so if you feel like you're lacking in that department, it's the writing just isn't up to par with where you think it should be, it's not a bad idea to work on that copy as well, okay? Um, but hopefully that'll give you some stuff to do and a new way of thinking about things. Um, but at the end of it all, I've never, ever, ever seen a therapist go into private practice and not eventually fill up a caseload. I've seen it take a long time, right? But I've never seen someone not be able to fill up a caseload. Um, so if you're watching this and you are going through this right now, you got this, you'll get it, all right, eventually. If you're watching this and you're thinking about starting a private practice, make sure you plan accordingly, a plan for how long it might take to fill up um, because it could take a while and we don't wanna make any you know big leaps into private practice full time um, without the guarantee of, of having uh, the ability to you know support ourselves. So uh, definitely think about that as well. Um, I hope you found this video helpful. If you like more information like this, you wanna be part of my consultation community, this is an online platform where um, I uh, interact with people directly. We do live group coaching calls. We have a gamified version of you know, a gamified element where we kind of have fun and, and do weekly challenges. And also I respond to every question that comes through in the community. If you want to be a part of that, you can do so by going to the link down below. And uh, because I really love having people in that community and I want people to benefit from it, um, you can have a free month. The code is let's, no, it's not let's play. The code is, I think it's, it's free. I'm not sure what the code is. The code will be down below in the description uh, next to the link. All right, but have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video.